What? Us? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm laughing at my hair. Oh my god, it's fantastic. <laughs> Where'd you get those little roses? The dollar store. When? A while ago. You went to the dollar store? Not recently. These are okay. old. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello, witch folk. Welcome to our coven. We are angels on broomsticks. <laughs> We're a mother-daughter duo. I'm Kristen. <laughs> and I'm Evangeline. And today, you're tuning in to Witches, Bitches, Martinis, and Makeup which is our fun sort of series where we do our makeup. We have a cocktail of the day. Come pretty and pink, baby. <laughs> Did I already say that we have a witchy or bitchy topic? I forget. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so today, maybe you can guess by our garb. <laughs> <laughs> our garbage. <laughs> that we are doing a mead summer. Mead as in summer. We call it, oh it's God. midsummer. We're talking about both the sort of summer solstice, the longest day Midsummer. of the year, and the movie Midsummer. Midsummer. It's so good, guys. It's a horror movie, and it's fantastic. It's like my favorite movie, it isn't is. it? You, you said you loved I just, it so I just much. love it. <laughs> so we're going to be chatting about that, just sort of chatting about that movie, see where things go, and our palette of the day is the Strawberry Dream from Lunar Beauty. Hello, Midsummer. Isn't that cute? The cocktail of the day? Cocktail of the day is menstrual blood lemonade. Which is a reference to the movie. We will yes. tell you later. It's they put, They're drinking... Yeah, it's not menstrual blood. It's grenadine that made us pink, but <laughs> not in the movie. I swear we haven't even had any yet. Yeah, I know. <gasps> oh. uh, yeah, there's menstrual blood in his lemonade. Yes. We'll explain. Yes. Soon. Okay. So are you ready to... Delve into the makeup. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay. Um, starting with our foundations. Yeah. Guys, I've been loving Good Apple uh, KVD. Mm. I just love it. Mm. High recommend. For summer, especially? For summer, yeah. yeah. Summer. So we're following this. Oh, what day that. is it? June 19th. So June 21st is the summer solstice, midsummer. It's the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. And then it's all downhill from that. Yeah, it's so sad. It's like the days are just going to start getting shorter and shorter. It's so sad. Uh, St. Jean-Baptiste Day in Quebec, where I, I'm from, mm -hmm. is a midsummer thing. But they just stole that from the pagans, as usual. You see midsummer festivals everywhere, really. You'll see it in a lot of cultures and different pagan celebrations. We're going to be focusing on the Swedish, Swedish, but Celtic, all kinds. And then Catholics coerce that into their own festival. Yeah, because they had to. to. So the movie, Midsummer, brief plot line. There's a main character named Danny. And she's she, a girl. I love her so much. Yeah. I love that actress played by Florence Pugh. Pugh. P U G H. Pugh. 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 P U G H. Florence, please tell us she's how She's so to... cute. Oh, she's got the best voice in the world. She does. And it's all British. It's it's like it's not Swedish, but these British actors are playing Americans. Mm. And they all look weird, a little bit off, you know? <laughs> you know how British people, you know, they try and be Americans and they're a little bit off? No. A, yeah. I haven't noticed. I didn't know anyone was British, so. I always, I can tell Kate Winslet. I can tell. Really? I can hear you. Even in Mayor? Yeah, even in Mayor. I could, maybe not Mayor. I think she okay. got very good, but mm -hmm. in a lot of things. Little Children, mm. Titanic. I can tell she's British. Mm. Okay. Well, the plot line, Florence Pugh, Danny, she has a very, at the very beginning of the movie, very tragic thing happens and she loses all her family. I won't, we're, yeah. we're going to spoil a little bit, but we'll try not to too much. And then she's got this shitty boyfriend, Christian. They've been together for four years and he's not They're very in supportive. university. They're, they're doing their thesis. thesis. Yeah. So they get this, there's this guy named Pele. And he invites... Do you remember all these people's names? Not all of them. And I just watched yeah. it just two seconds ago, and I don't remember anybody's name. Pele. I'm pretty sure that's his name. He invites them to visit his family, like, home in the countryside of Sweden for the Midsummer Festival. So 
Danny. He's Swedish. He's Swedish. Danny, her boyfriend Christian, and his stupid ass friends. Stupid group of dope heads. <laughs> they go and join this midsummer festival, and it's the Harga people, and they seem very odd. But Aww. yeah. So they're anthropology students, the boys. But they start their whole trip on a mushroom trip. <laughs> they take mushrooms. Yes. They do. They do. It's a very trippy movie. I hope that was somewhat of a brief synopsis. Just think you're in a weird countryside with a weird band of Swedish people looking like this. <laughs> What's so interesting though, like is that it's a horror movie, but you you always think of horror movies in the dark, mm -hmm. you know, and but it's in the bright sunshine of a beautiful sunny summer day. Like yeah. it's well it takes place during a whole week, but there is some I guess there's a couple of scenes in the dark but no barely because it's midsummer in sweden so oh they don't have dark it doesn't even get fully dark they don't have the dark which is so cool Ugh. i yeah. i like that i experienced that in iceland there was like two hours of darkness when i was there and they had to have like these blackout curtains for sleeping mm. but it's weird so it's it's trippy because it's always daylight basically the movie's based on actual things that are true like, they do, well, I don't really want to spoil that, like, they do think of the people, like, as seasons, like, your ages, like, so, mm -hmm. from some certain uh, times, you're in your, I got, what, spring, summer? Well, it's like the maiden mother crone image, the threefold goddess, it's yeah. like you're the maiden, you're young, before, like, when you're about to become fertile, then you're... That's your role as a young person, and then you become the mother, the or the father, the person who's fertile, and then you're in your old years. So this movie and these people, they focus a lot on honoring that life cycle and also honoring death in a way, and yeah. knowing when it's time to to die. They're not yeah. afraid of death, apparently. There's a very horrific scene. I think this is the scene that turns a lot of people off from this movie. I'll just say, like two elderly people sacrifice themselves for the for the group because they're old and they don't want to be a liability and they jump off a cliff it's it's intense <laughs> to say the least but i have mixed feelings 72. about that scene 72 is not very old but i don't know what do you think about that if they have chosen that for themselves and it's something that's part of their i don't know i don't know i'm i have mixed feelings myself because having you know, seen older people die recently. Yeah. It's not a pretty thing. So if you're good to go. Huh? Yeah. Also, what about the phallic all this? Oh, okay. Well, okay. So midsummer, it's very fertile. Everything's green. So there's so much like fertile imagery in this movie. Just the fact that it is summer and the sun is out all the time. But there's a lot of little sneaky tidbits happening. There's a lot of the movies already predicted in these murals. And there's one particular mural of this woman chopping off her pubic hair, putting it in a pie for a guy, putting her menstrual blood in his drink. Putting it in a pie. And that's how she sort of coerces him into being her mate. So there's this girl who's after Christian Danny's boyfriend to be her sort of mate and so she cooks up puts her little pubic hairs into his little pie and you notice like he's the only one with pink lemonade and everyone else has, has normal yellow lemonade. lemonade so that's the ode to the pink it doesn't look like this pink oh. obviously but this these Harga people clearly very much value fertility and um, that's the focus of this festival a lot. So I was listening to a podcast, um, the Monstrous Feminine Podcast, which I highly recommend. They talk about women in horror. Anyway, so they were trying to talk about whether they think that this is actually a cult or not, because it doesn't exactly fall under the parameters of what a cult is. So something you need to have in a cult often is a charismatic male leader, which they don't really have. Like, no. There's... A very this is very community community oriented. There isn't really a huge hierarchy. 
happening. No. And a lot of the women play important roles in this. And then there's also not a sense of like coercion within this group of people. Like everybody knows what's up except for all these like foreigners who've been brought in. And there's not that many. There's like six or so, right? Yeah. And so it's like they're not being led astray by this charismatic leader. They're all a group together, united, and know what's going on. And the people that they've brought in are really just to discard. They're not to be, to join their group except for the main character, Danny. They want to try and sort of integrate her. And you kind of see her journey towards what might bring her to that or not. You have to watch the movie. There's the maypole, obviously. They're all dancing around the maypole with their hair like this to try and find the May Queen at one point. And did you know, like, the maypole is always on Midsummer. It's such, like, a phallic image, and you always have all the girls dancing around it. There's a maypole scene in Mad Men. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Don Draper is sitting in a lawn chair, and he's touching the grass very yeah. sensuously while he watches the teacher... Dance around. Yeah, but see, that's phallic. It's him wanting to... Bone? Phallic. So in true life, though, in Sweden, what they do for Midsummer's festivities is they mostly celebrate it on the eve of Midsummer, which is, I think it's the 24th or the 26th? Well, I mean, generally they have a around day. the 24th. But on the happen. day, they start drinking schnapps and they start boning each other <laughs> willy nilly. Yeah, apparently that was a thing you read about. It's in Wikipedia. Wikipedia it. Oh. We didn't make it up. So, when you watch this movie, like, whose side are you on? And let us know if you've seen this movie out in the comments. Like, are you kind of rooting for these people? Or are you like, you know in a horror movie when like someone's being chased or stalked and you're like rooting for the main character to like get away like Ooh, I almost find so in this one I'm not rooting you're for not them rooting to get away. for the yeah exactly you're rooting for Danny you're rooting for Danny for sure but you're not rooting for a boyfriend no we hate oh and him. he has the best best ending oh, of yeah. anything <laughs> I've ever seen in my whole life he's such. A terrible boyfriend. He's such a gaslighter. He, he's just the epitome of a shitty dude who knows how to manipulate and make the woman, especially like in that kind of relationship, feel so stupid. At one point, he discloses to her, oh yeah, I'm going to Sweden. And they're in a four-year relationship. And she's just like, or she doesn't even hear from him. The friends say, yeah, we're going to Sweden. Yeah. She's like, why didn't you I feel tell like me I can about totally this? relate to this oh, person. Oh, I totally can. And then the fact that he's just like, she's like, why didn't you tell me you were going to Sweden? And she's perfectly reasonable about it. And then he's like, gets so mad and righteous right away, like, as if she's done something wrong. Well, because he's got a group of friends who hate her, too. Yeah. Like, it's true. I think they're just jelly. <laughs> That's the thing, like, about having a boyfriend that I don't miss is like the friends. Mm. You have to deal with her friends. It's yeah. never any good, is it? <laughs> How are you doing? I have not started on my eyes yet. Oh, you're still... I haven't... Okay. Okay, okay. I'm trying to look very, like, fresh and springy and pastoral, springy. summery, whatever. I just think flowers and I think spring, summer. There's one scene in particular where she's, like, just covered in flowers and this palette has like a lot of those colors. Yeah, it's a really pretty palette, by the way. I'm gonna do my highlight. I'm doing my Ritual de Fee. Um, I got a couple of new things from them. I got the new highlight called The Fawn, which is limited edition. Oh, it's it's so really, pretty. really pretty. Okay, so in that podcast I listened to, um, mm -hmm. they were talking about how the menstrual blood thing that they had heard of people like actually doing that. And someone's like, aunt, grandma, I don't know what exactly the story was, but someone said that this woman said the reason she kept her husband was because she put period blood in his food or something. Like it's a thing. <laughs> I'm gonna steal some of that. I already put some highlighter on, but this, this is That's so not pretty. the fawn. <gasps> oh. This is the fawn. Oh, it has like a pink, it's like multi chrome -y. Oh wow. Ooh. I'm crazy for this palette. 
I'm mad. I don't own it. Also, like, I feel like they're not a cult because of just how much they honor, like, the woman's role. The women are pretty much revered. Yeah, because it's so, so much about fertility and women are, well, more associated with fertility. Do you think that that's, like, a Nordic thing? Well, I, I feel like a lot of older cultures and pagan cultures celebrated, like, male and female energy equally because you had a lot of these female goddesses and fertility goddesses oh, and, true. Yeah. and then until christianity came around and thought no there's one god yeah freya it's just like this little wash of pink but i have to do more than that i like what i just did and i don't even want to do more well maybe don't so why do you think this is like one of your favorite movies because I love a horror movie that is more psychological than it is. I don't like slasher movies. Mm. I, my favorite horror movie up until this point had been uh, Rosemary's Baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love this movie. I love just a good mind, mind fuck. You yeah. Know? And then their, their friends disappear. We don't know where they went and that kind of thing. Yeah. We th think they're gone. Are they gone? And it's so trippy. They set it up like you're on a drug trip and things are always moving in the background because half the time they're all on drugs. And I saw this movie in the theater and I saw the director's cut too. And by the time I came out of the movie, I was like oh, I'm so out jolly. on the streets. Like, I felt like I had been on a drug trip. Like, Not that I've been on a drug trip. I've only barely smoked weed. but I have been on drug <laughs> trips. Do you feel like it has that energy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just putting a little bit of... The white uh, glitter. What is this called? Blue diamond. Yeah, look how cute. Just there, boop, boop. And that's it for me, baby. It's a very minimal look. Not much in there, just all out there. Are we going to need to do a fertility festival sacrifice because of the fact that lately only boys have been being born? What do you we mean? We have a weird theory. Maybe we need to do some ritual. Everybody we know has been having boys. Like, boy, 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 boy. And then you were just saying that yeah. in Pickering, in it's Pickering, all girls. This man came to our house to visit, and he had a baby last month, and they had a girl. Wow, that's the first girl we heard of. Yeah. And then, but he said, everybody in where? Pickering. Pickering was having girls, but everybody somewhere else was having boys. <laughs> Something yeah. in the water. But I don't know what we're going to do. What are we going to sacrifice? Ex-boyfriends. Oh, okay. Good. Because <laughs> I was thinking about some of my boyfriends. And I think I had some shitty ones. You did? I did. The first boyfriend I ever had was a shitty fucking boyfriend. He was. He ruined my life. He taught me something that I shouldn't have been taught. Which is? Don't ever take a boyfriend back. If somebody disappears, let them go. Say bye. Mm. When they come back because they're bored or whatever, don't ever take them back. I agree. If somebody's making you miserable, get rid of them. <laughs> Which actually is a lesson in, in this movie because Christian, the dude, it's like if you don't like your girlfriend so much, from the beginning it's clear he just doesn't like her. And why she's do you so break nice. up with her, I though? Why, why do you like, like her? You, you dug your own grave there, buddy. He should have broken up with her way before if he felt this way. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of going to leave this here for now because I want to see how much lashes brings this together. I feel like okay. this look is so not me, but this is my midsummer ode. ode this to is midsummer. my midsummer. And I might go for the blue lip or the pink lip. Let the internet choose this Fenty pink. Or this Kaleidos Blue. What do you think, Internet? <laughs> I'll, I'll read your mind, okay. and I'll come back. Did the Internet decide? The, the Internet decided the pink. Oh, nice. Thank you, people, for voting. <laughs> I am going to do my usual, though, liner with endless cacao. I got this NARS, like, lip crayon. Shade is Dragon Girl. In a boxy charm, so I wanted to try it. Okay, I'm excited to try this. I've never tried it before. It looks like nail polish. 
It's got a doe foot. Oh. Look how bright it is. Oh, nice. This smells like, ugh, cherry medicine. I'm gonna get my lips done. Mm. Is it wrong? No. Hello. What? Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Is wow. it Fenty? Wow. It's Fenty. You know my favorite makeup brand is Fenty. Not for eyeshadow palettes, because that's a whole other topic we can talk about. I do like my Melt. I'm loving the Nomad and the Kaleidos. Yeah. I would say those are my top three. These are the finished looks. You I the... feel pastoral, for sure. You look pastoral. I didn't want to overdo it with like different colors. I wanted to look very summer spring. You look like you're going to milk a cow. <laughs> I was wondering if my... If our Nordic and Swedish jeans are coming out today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go climb a maypole. <laughs> we want to know definitely in the comments down below if anyone has seen Mead Summer. Because... Mead Summer. 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 We love it. We love that movie. I feel like we maybe gave a chaotic version of it to you guys. But it's okay because we've been drinking and that's fine. Half a cocktail. <laughs> but I was reading, or not reading, I was watching on YouTube some guys, or like analysis of it, and one of those things where they just explain the whole movie. They don't even barely analyze it. And he was saying, this movie's all about control. And it's just about losing control, taking control. And I felt like he just missed so much about it. Yeah. Like just thinking this movie's about control. I think it's like... So much more complex than that, and especially with the fertility aspect, wondering which side you're on, the sort of culty themes, but it not quite being a cult. I just thought that that was just a shitty analysis. Yeah, it's something like a dude would say. Yeah, stupid dude. I don't know. I feel like they weren't care. seeing it. Oh, in the movie, there's also a lot of hidden gems with the Nordic runes that are like. Like, the tables are often set in runes. Oh, yeah, weird ways. Yeah. yeah, and they have, like, little symbols, and those runes refer to different things, whether it's, like, wealth, prosperity, strength, a journey, fertility. So there's a lot of hidden gems. Guys, yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch that movie, and then enjoy the rest of your Salmar. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's all downhill from yeah, here. Yeah, it's all downhill. So next time we're going to be doing the Nomad America's Parks palette, yes. which is inspired by America's Parks. So we're going to be reviewing that, I think, later this week. So, so definitely stay tuned for that. And stay witchy, stay bitchy, have yourself a menstrual cocktail. And get get pastoral. Dance around a maypole. Yeah. We'll see you next maple. time. Bye, Bye witches. witches. You think Botox would help with these lines? <sighs> I also don't like how one of my eyebrows goes up higher than the other. Oh, no, no, Hina. What? No, it like it actually is like wonking my face up. I don't like it. Where? I like Look. asymmetra. Yeah, it's cute. No, it's not. Yeah.